Having dominion and authority means standing your ground and making tough choices. Hi, this is Barry Phelps with 10 Minute Torah, day number five of the Torah portion, Bear Sheet. Yes, we've caught up. Let's go back again to the book of Bereshit or Genesis and look in chapter number three, a little bit of what we've talked about earlier, but a different angle. In verse four, it says, And the Hosh said to the woman, the serpent said to the woman, You shall certainly not die, for Elohim knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings from, for themselves. Obviously, Hava, Eve, did not make the right choice. When Yah gives to us authority, authority in his word, authority in the name of Yeshua, authority to walk in the spirit, authority to make an impact in the environment in which we have been entrusted to live, to literally diffuse the presence and the reality of Yah as we have him revealed to us, to those that are around us. We are light in darkness, and we have the authority to be that light. We have authority to be salt in the earth and cause people to have a, a sense of wanting something more. We are a source of living water. Yeshua said up out of our innermost being would flow rivers of living water. And so you and I are um, given the opportunity to be those who walk in his authority, to heal in his name, to deliver in his name, to preach in his name, to exemplify Yeshua, given that authority to do so in the earth. For what purpose? What is the end result of this? Well, ultimately, we would say, well, this eventually establish the kingdom. That's true. Between now and then, there is also something called our own personal destiny. When you were brought into creation, when seed was conceived within the womb of your mother, Yah implanted a soul within that seed to enable us to experience life. That soul was given by him with a destiny. And it has been our choice from the moment where we receive breath in this world to follow the path of that destiny, to seek it out, to find it, to grasp it, to live it, and to benefit others by it. That means standing your ground for righteousness and for truth and choosing the hard choices, making the hard decisions. That means at times that you lose relationships and friendships in order to follow after Yeshua. Any teenager will tell you that at some point, if they're going to follow Messiah, they're going to have to go against the grain, lose some friends, not be a part of the major crowd. And it's a tough choice. Adulthood is not any different. There are times that we just lose people because of the choices that we make, good or bad. Uh, it may mean moving from one area to another. It may mean changing your jobs. It could be a financial distressing time. But you make the hard choices because you believe in truth and you walk after it. So when we think about the, the prophets, Yah authorized them to, to see his will and then declare what that will is. By declaring his will, Yah is inviting you and I to participate. He's inviting me to participate with, with the way that he's working in the earth. That invitation means at times a hard choice. But we also understand this, and I've shared this many times, it's worth reemphasizing again here. And that is that Yah does not move arbitrarily in the earth by his own desire and will. Well, I'm just going to run right over top of everything that is already established and all the will of man. I'm just going to insert myself into this world and they'll just have to deal with it. The way that he works in the earth 
and among people is through those who are his agents, those who are his covenant people, who are known as Am Israel. So when Yah heals, he heals through the hands of those that are obedient to him to lay hands on the sick. When he gives us wisdom, it is oftentimes through the words of a wise counselor, uh, a brother who will come to us and say, I feel like the Father would say to you, and they give us a word from him, or else through the printed page that somebody has recorded for us. Yah works through us to manifest his will in the earth. So he says to Moshe, hold out the rod that is in your hand out over the waters and they will split. Why didn't Yah just split the waters? No, he required an act of obedience from Moshe first. He took Ezekiel, Yehezko, into a vision that he saw a valley of dry bones. What was the remedy for those bones? He says, man, son of man, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and you shall say to the spirit, thus says to the master Yahweh, come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe on these killed ones so that they live. That's Ezekiel chapter 37. And so Yah invites, encourages, and requires the agency of mankind to produce his will. Again, it oftentimes requires you and I making tough choices. It's not easily done. But those who have dominion and authority, those who recognize their calling, their assignments, their purposes, their locations, why they are where they are, who they are, why their life experiences have brought them to a certain point uh, of understanding and worldview and perspective. They understand I am achieving destiny here. The authority is not for me to be self-serving, but as Yeshua said in the book of Yochanan, John chapter 13, it's about serving others, leadership, is about serving others. Uh, when we think about them, what we have just read here in chapter number three, Kava had a destiny. She and Adam were supposed to live in the garden, tend to the garden, raise their family in the garden, raising up subsequent generations, being fruitful and multiplying in the earth a generation, multiple generations of people who would live in the light and the glory of Yah, have an intimate fellowship with him, close connection to him, and they abandoned that for what they thought they did not have. What is so tragic here is that the serpent convinced Hava that she didn't have what she already had. She already had what he was offering, wisdom. She was already in a vital relationship with Elohim, an esteem level that we're still trying to recapture. She had what we are all yearning for, and she didn't know it. Our adversary is so deceptive that he can convince us that the very things that we already have and enjoy and can benefit from are lacking in us. The next time that a thought comes to you that says, I wish I had, or I wish I could, I wish I were some different version of myself, do a more prayerful, spiritual inventory, and you may find out that you're yearning for something that is already in your hands. She listened to an alternative vision that was illegitimate. She already had the knowledge. She already had the presence. She was deceived. Unfortunately, deception can rob your authority. Think on these things while I say to you, Shabbat Shalom. I do pray that you have an enjoyable, delightful, presence-filled Shabbat with all who gather with you. And we'll see you again next week. Until then, Shalom. Shalom.